about this piece because you've done a lot of shows in the past, you've done theatre shows, you've worked with choreographers, you've worked with dancers, and I just wondered doing this, what's been different for you, and what there is from what you've done that you want to take forwards for the future. As for the future, um, we kind of do a lot of choreography now, and so I think it'd be quite nice to sort of reinvent the rock show and uh, you know, <laughs> see what we can do there. But also, I quite like there was a, a rehearsal on earlier this week, and they, had, they, they were changing the lights with these trains that went up and down. I quite like the idea of choreography using machines. <laughs> Mechanistic choreography. Yeah, I don't know if it's been done, but it might be quite interesting. It's a good way to go. Um, have you? Uh, you quite rarely, in fact, you had the music like at the beginning of rehearsals. We did lots of talking before, we made some changes, talking to Matthew Dunster, who was our dancer and helped write the original scenario from the music uh, So it's quite rare that we should have a full score at the beginning of rehearsals. But there's lots of other elements that come in later, including some of the video, of course, the lights, and the set. And I just wondered how that, that fitted together with what you had made on the music and what came in the play with some of which I think we really only had a chance to look at actually once we got in the theatre. Yeah, um, I'm so happy she's signing with my accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, funny enough, it's not, um, I normally have the score before before I start work because I've always worked with uh, dead composers. <coughs> Uh, so, so they were they were with me from the beginning, and I didn't have to respond if I changed things about. Um, but it was it was a, a pleasure to have it. But then I also knew that I had a constant communication uh, with the boys about uh, things that we may need to work uh, theatrically, um, and, and they were very accommodating in doing these changes, especially throughout uh, the previous and bits of rehearsal. So um, it was. Uh, great to have it from the beginning, uh, and then great to feel organic towards the end. So it, it, it just worked quite all right, I think. Because Paul, our DTR sound designer, did do quite a lot of work in terms of, um, I suppose, threading, linking some of the sections together on sound effects, didn't he? Yeah, and I think it was it was a, a big wish of mine to have Paul Aditi, who I've always uh, wanted to work with. Um, because I knew that he would give theatrical form to a lot of uh, to a lot of the linking. I mean, we just knew that we had at the end of the day we had we had a show to put on a show that had to tell a story, and we know that he was the element that uh, that was going to be the glue between uh, between the music and the choreography. Um, I'm, because we don't have long, because there's rather a lot of you, I would quite like to hand over because I'm sure a lot of you are here especially to ask some questions. So um, if you've got some questions for the boys or for Javier, um, then put your hand up and shout very loud. Yeah, the gentleman there with the blue shirt. Is there any of the music from the ballet 
So that gentleman was asking whether there's any of the music from this performance and show that they want to develop or take on in the future. Um, I don't think we have any plans to do that. No, the record company would quite like us to put a vocal on uh, the meeting. And I'd quite like um, Tiny Temple or someone to rap on the ground. But <laughs> neither of those things are going to happen, so... No. <laughs> Some of it actually worked the other way around. Um, the music in the competition was originally a song called You're the Exception That Proves the Rule. So, and we made it into an, into an instrument. Um, well, I think that's probably the only one. The, the music for the meeting sort of existed. Chris wrote the initial theme for it two or three years ago, didn't you? And um, you, said you, had, you said you had lyrics for it. That never heard. But too good for, you know, for public listening. <laughs> So I think to answer your question, I don't, well, I don't think we're planning to. Uh, I mean, the meeting is, the, is which is you know, what the end of that one. I think that that would probably end itself. But I personally never be able to think of any proper words for it. Next question. Okay. Yes, at the end of Why did uh, Chris choose this particular story to base the ballet on? Yeah, well, firstly, there's the title, which just leapt off the page, the most incredible thing. I thought it sounded intriguing, and also it sort of led to sort of a very ambitious project. Um, there's also a story which is just a traditional fairy tale, one that, you know, set in the kingdom, there's a love story, there's the good, the bad, there's the happy ending. And also, thirdly, there's the clock, which you know lends itself to twelve different pieces of music, which could be interpreted, um, you know, how I imagined in a quite interesting dance style. So, those three reasons, really. It really is like the most disturbing title for a choreographer to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a big, big, tall order to do to do that one uh, with the critics. Uh, but um, but also, it's, uh, for me, for me, it's the story that seems to. Uh, have a lot of questions to answer. The one that we seem to, uh, it, it really was the one that more we talked about, the more uh, we felt that even three acts were not long enough to explain the depth of the character of the three principles. Um, so it, it was just ideal. It, it was almost a pitch for a ballet itself, the, story, the original story. Okay, the lady in the middle there, yeah. Uh, you use the three principles yourself uh, every day, every day, every day, every day. So that question was about how it was for the boys to watch something rather than performing themselves, how it was to actually watch something that they had written rather than be performing in it. Well, you'd think it'd be easier watching something rather than performing it, but actually it's good just as nerve wracking. Um, it's very satisfying though to see someone interpret what you've done, and um, you know, the creative team has been incredible on this. And, um, so it's just been a joy to, to be present at home to Was watch. it very different? One of the things I was wondering was when you were writing it and Sven was orchestrating it, what you had in your mind and then what was made in the end. Was it a big difference? Did, it, did you go that far visually or were you ready to take what came? Well, we're not choreographers, but I do tend to dance in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my dancing skills are probably not quite what I'm happy as I am. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I mean, in my, in my head, um, I, I had pictures from the from the story, really. And when Javier was choreographing, putting the show together, Chris and I weren't even in the country for all the time. And so we, we and that was a deliberate decision not to hover around rehearsals, because um, I think we just we thought Javier works, you know, as an artist and, and it, it was it was his creation at that point. We've written the music and he could do what he wanted. And so it was very exciting to come back. Um, not very long, just it was just last week the dressed us. Um, and that was the first time we saw the whole thing on the stage. So um, we had to 